watched my daughter's beautiful home burn to the grind. The firemen could not help it. They couldn't save the house. But in the middle of a nor'easter, they saved the home next door on the right, and they saved the home on the left, which was nearly impossible to do because there were sparks flying everywhere. Now, this lady says this gentleman over here, with all due respect, is worth all of his $70,000. Well, I happen to think every firefighter in here tonight is worth 10 times that much. They're worth, they're worth their weight in gold. I am, excuse me? I pay the taxes. I've been paying taxes for 47 years. Mr. Papa. Frank, uh, let's not get in dialogue okay. back and forth. All right. Anyway, um, I am right now the matriarch of a fireman, policeman, beach patrol family. I have all, everybody. My husband was a police officer for 33 years. He said it only takes one time. The same goes for a fireman. It only takes one time. These men leave their homes every day when they go to a fire and they do not know what's going to happen. So please, you people in here, you don't care because you don't live here. You don't have to worry. You, listen, you're fine with part-time firemen because it's never going to affect you. And it's never going to affect you. So that's all I have to say. The firemen of Freedom Team. Tyler, Tyler. My name is Tyler Hannon. I live at Three Spalding Place, Brigantine, New Jersey. Oh, sure. My name is Tyler Hannon, and I live at Three Spalding Place, Brigantine, New Jersey. Um, first, can I say I am an EMT. I may not work in the town, but I am a state certified EMT. The state certifies us, not the town. I have great respect for all the firemen that have come out tonight to support what we do here. Um, but I, as an EMT, would like to serve my own town. I've had to go out of town. But I'd like to serve the residents of my own town, part-time, full-time, whatever. I'd like the opportunity to serve as an EMT for the city of Brigantine, not have to go out of town to serve. So I do it out of the goodness of my heart for the city of Apsique. And I'm not speaking on their behalf. Please do not take that out of context. I'm not speaking on the Apsique EMS squad. But I'd like the opportunity to serve my town, not another town, as an EMT certified by the state. So part-time, full-time, not trying to take anybody's job. I just like the opportunity to serve my own town instead of another person's town. Is that him? Everybody? Thank you. Yeah. No, they, they don't. They don't <laughs> ask questions. <laughs> Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Tom. I'm Elsie Thompson. I live at 221st Street. I've been in Brigantine 45 years, also. Um, I'm, I was wondering about when they built the uh, community center, they s we were promised that they were going to sell the old library and the old civic center. Couldn't we do, sell those two assets to make up for the difference that we're short to, for the firemen that are retiring? I think you said 700000 or something. I don't know before. I don't remember what the f exact figure was. Wouldn't that be a consideration? And um, then now that we're having the, right. the, the tax assessments are supposed to be 100 percent correct now. So hopefully we wouldn't have a problem with taxes after this year. Uh, that well, we could start out by putting money aside for the future. Well, see, that, um, that was uh, promised as we went into the community center project. As you know, the market became very soft. So yeah. the theory behind the community center was that we, when we were able to sell some of those properties, that we would then take that money to reduce the debt. Um, which would, would help in terms of debt service uh, overall. But um, the, number, the number is not 700,000 that was, that was talked about. Um, in Ms. Blumenthal's analysis, it was uh, 400,000 and then 335,000 in subsequent years based on the numbers that she put into her, her formula. Um, but the community, we, we should be looking at if the market improves um, moving forward with the sale of those properties. I agree with you. Well, that makes sense. Well, couldn't we just table this whole thing for another year just to see what happens when the tax bills come out? Because if it comes out the way we are hoping it comes out, 
all of us would probably would not mind spending a few more dollars if we had to for a higher budget. I wouldn't. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes, yes, come on up. I'm sorry, on, on the salary ordinance. Salary, salary ordinance. Okay, we'll get there, I promise. On the salary ordinance? Salary ordinance? Yeah. Thanks again. Jim Conti, 108 North Roosevelt Boulevard. I'd like to ask Jennifer a question, and then I'd like to address sure. something, if I may. Jennifer, if I understand, seven part-timers, is that correct you were looking for? No, um, it's we were having seven full-time retire no, to maintain this. Are you looking to yeah, retire? nine. I'm sorry, nine. My understanding, because someone made a comment earlier about something, not the fire department, but there will never be nine at once men in the fire department. Am I correct? There will be experienced people there. They're expe we have, um, they're very experienced, I mean, actually. No, I'm talking about the part-timers. They will not be left in the air all by themselves. No. That's no, what I thought. That's not. what I thought. Okay. Mayor. I think as the mayor, your response, I don't know, we're sitting back and I listened to one councilman and I was there one, at the council meeting when he talked about the money and the budget. And you just made a comment about an $18 EMT, you would take him over a $40 guy. Well, if we hire a $30,000 fireman, it's the same thing of, of between that, a $30,000 fireman or a $100,000 fireman. That's not the point here. I'm not, we're not knocking, I don't think anybody's knocking the fire department or the municipal workers, or the police department. They are good people. No one's, I'm no one saying that. There's a budget, there's a money problem. Right. And to sit there and sit there and make it like the firemen against the people or the, the police against the people, this is what it's turning out to be. It's turning out to be a war. You can only go to the well so often. Then it runs dry. And if you abuse it, it runs dry sooner. So we have a money problem for that councilman. I was in a, in a meeting when he made the statement. He asked for, you know, if anybody has any ideas. But to sit there and just take pot shots at one another, this is all we're doing all night tonight, is taking pot shots at one another. This side of the room is cheering every time a fireman or a policeman speaks, this side's both. It's a joke. I mean, it comes down to a money thing. If you ain't got the money, you can't be doing it. You gotta come up with the money somewhere. And well, we're, you're not, you're sitting there, you know, taking a shot, we shoot this, we have an ATM. It's not solving a problem, it's a waste of time. It's a money thing. If we got the money, pay the people. 36 and a half years, I was in a union. I ain't anti-union. Pay them if you got it. If you ain't got it, let them know we, we don't have the money. We have to come up with something. And we're not doing it, but we're doing it tonight. Are you finished? Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what we need to look for are solutions. One solution has been proposed. May not be the best solution based on the information that I've been provided. There are other solutions to look at. Municipal budgets are made up of two parts. Revenues and expenditures. The revenue side of the budget, we, we still don't have a complete handle on where all the revenues are for next year. We don't know that. But at the same time, we also need to look at the expenditure side, and I agree with you. We need to cut some costs going forward. I mean, but this, this is, excuse me, this has been brewing, though. This ain't something that just happened tonight. Well, we so, so we, the council, we yourself or everybody else on the council, as this councilman asked for, you know, if anybody has suggestions, should have been thinking of this a while ago, not just tonight. Well, how, how, long, how, how, long, work. how long have you? Seven years I've owned okay. my home at Brigantine. Well, we've been reducing staff probably for the entire time you've been here. We've been reducing members in the police department. We've been, when I first started in city government, we had about 40 police officers. Right now we have, Dan? 30. 33. So we're down seven officers in the police department. We're down in other areas in public works. Over the years, we've reduced and reduced and reduced. The fire department has had reductions. They're probably going to see reductions again. But is this the best solution for the operation of that department? And there are a lot of different ways to look at this. That's what I'm asking. Have we looked at all the, the different ways to do this? And, and you were... Um, you know, as you said, worked full time for 36 years. I'm sure you, the, the fire department and what I'm hearing from them is, and I, I was a member of the beach patrol for a lot of years, you work as a member of a team. They're in the trust business. That's what they are. When they go into a building, they got to trust the guys behind them. 
when you launch a, a lifeboat from the beach or you're out there swimming and hoping somebody's coming to get you after you, coming after you, it's, a, it's the trust business. Police officers go on a call. They need to know who is behind them. That's, that's what we're saying. The training, the ability to work together as a team, all that needs to be looked at. And there are some other options, some very viable options. There are some additional positions in this salary ordinance that nobody's even talking about. We did away with the deputy police chief many years ago. We did away with the deputy fire chief many years ago. I have some concerns on some other part-time positions. We have a part-time CFO. I don't know how many people are aware of this, but the city of Brigantine, because we collect for the county, we collect for the school district, and our own taxes, we've, we have about $55 million passed through City Hall. That's a lot of money. You have a part-time person who has the ultimate responsibility to say all that is accurate. That, that's a problem. I, I believe, and, I, and quite frankly, I don't know of any municipalities our size, maybe I'm wrong, who have a part-time CFO. Um, we need, purchasing is not something that's done, I work in a public entity, it's not something that's done just as an oversight, it's something that's done every day. There are huge savings if you purchase correctly, and you need somebody here who does those kind of things. We, we have these interim positions, and I'm going to be very candid about the public safety director, and, and I've said this to Mr. Howard every meeting, but I believe we can work very efficiently with chiefs. The difference in salary is the difference between a captain's salary and a chief's salary. That's, that's the analysis. If, if we look at keeping a public safety director in, in the analysis that I saw, we then don't have to hire any police or fire. But if we don't keep a public safety director, we have to hire police and fire. That, that doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense to me when I look at that analysis. And I think that we could function very well. I believe we have the talent in our departments to run their own departments. That's police, fire, and public works, and the beach patrol. We have people who can do that. And we really, at this point, no, no uh, respect. Disrespect to Mr. Howard, we really don't need a public safety director. In fact, I would ask Mr. Howard, when he was a police officer in Mount Laurel, how did, how did you feel as a police officer about having a public safety director? I was asked that question several times, and my initial thing, I had no, I had no frame of reference because when I started as a public safety director, my first seven years in the job was with a public safety director. He left and went somewhere else, and then we became chief. Honestly, in my experience, there was no difference other than the fact that what has been stated in the white paper from the police chiefs. There's obviously differences of statutorial differences. I think it depends on the circumstances at, at hand. Right. So that's been my personal experience in it, yes. And I appreciate your, your honesty on that. But I, I think that we're ready to move forward as, as a community. And I appreciate your comments. We need, to, we need to stop all this. We need to move forward. And, and the way I would like to move forward is having chiefs, in all those departments and taking a hard look at this analysis. There may be some other ways to do this. There may be some things that, uh, that will work well and we will keep the quality of service that we have. That, that's my own feeling. Um, and I think we can do it. But I, I don't think we can just put our toe in the water, say we're doing one thing and then all of a sudden we have something else and then we have all this controversy all over again. But I, I appreciate your comments. Vince? <laughs> Vince Sarah, 912 Sarazen. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am the president of the Beach Patrol. Um, it seems like there, seem, there seems to be an information gap between actually what goes on our departments and the information that you're being provided. One of the arguments that's been made for creating this salary ordinance in these positions is that there's no one qualified within the departments, that there's no one who understands the responsibility of management and how to make those decisions for what's best for the city versus what's best for the brotherhood of that association. I wonder if council's aware that the only reason our acting chief was asked to step down was because the other two departments didn't have chiefs and it wouldn't be fair. And our chief never hemmed, never hauled, never said a word, never made a comment. He simply stepped down because it was the right thing to do. So we talk about this idea of a partnership. 
Time and time again, I've come in here and talk about the partnership. I've talked about the things that we've done as a department. And it's nice to try to lump us in with everybody else and take away from the things that we've done. But the information that either you're being provided with or that's going out to the public is incorrect. You know, we sit here and we talk about negotiations. And it's funny, we can talk about it in the newspaper, we can talk about it here, but the one thing that people need to understand is it would be inappropriate for us to respond to negotiations because it's not the right thing to do. We can't do it when you talk about negotiating in good faith. So we can't talk about our positions. We can't talk about the good things that we want to do for this city, and people know it. So we unfairly characteristics, uh, uh, characterize us as being these, these thugs, these uh, angry employees who are just here for ourselves. That is not the case. We are here because we love this island. <coughs> we serve this community because it is special to us. And there are so many times that I've come to the city manager and we've tried to talk about issues that'll make things better. And she said to me, and I, you know, a lot of times people try to paint her in a bad light and sometimes I feel bad for her for that. She said to me so many times and she's looked at me and she's like, wow, you, you're, you're really trying to help me. Yes, I'm trying to help you. I can't do things the way you want to do them. But if we do them this way, we can achieve your goal of saving the taxpayers money and uh, keep the integrity of the job that we do. And her response is always, well, let me check, let me find out, which we're always respectful of. We never want somebody to make a snap decision. Take your time, think about it. We get to one or two responses. Either A, no response. Or B, I can't do it, do it this way. So I don't know who it is she checks in with, but I look at the fact that we made a statement today that she doesn't have a contract. So the fact that she doesn't have a contract means she serves at the pleasure of the majority. And I'm not saying that anyone up here directs her to do the things she does, but she checks with someone who doesn't want us to be successful in the things we do. And this is the defense we make in passing the salary ordinances for options we might want to have. We try to present this as if there's only two choices. There's a multitude of choices. And I really wish that we had the opportunity to sit down and talk with people instead of playing the telephone game. Because there's a lot of people up here that I respect, that I've known for a long time, that really, I believe, want to do the right thing. But there's some sense of information that's missing that's not allowing us to move forward. We've been arguing this issue for 10 months. 10 months we've been arguing the issue. Why haven't we moved forward? That's what's destroying this town, and I do agree with the gentleman who spoke before. This isn't a service issue, it's a revenue issue. I said that 10 months ago. This isn't about quality of service. This is about bringing revenue into the town, this is about making our businesses successful, and this is about moving forward. Everybody wants the same thing, and I don't care what side of the issue you're on. You want a nice community to live in, and you want taxes you can afford. Thank you. Right. Mr. Sarah, before you leave. Excuse me. Mr. Sarah, I'd like to respond to that and feel free to come up if you'd like. You feel bad for the manager because people talk about her? You're one of the worst offenders. <laughs> Destroying the town? Really? Really? The town's being destroyed? Yeah. Who's being negative now, Mr. Sarah? The first time you came before this council, and I didn't know you and you didn't know me, but you stood there when the subject at hand was just the discussion that we might consider doing a public safety director. You did not hesitate. You immediately accused me and my fellow Democrats of having no concern for human life or human safety because we would dare even talk about doing that because of your self-professed absolute commitment to public safety. Then a couple of days later, you're quoted in the press as saying that your department was down 10 people over the past six years. Well, okay, the past six years, Democrats have controlled this council only since 2013. Where were you in the years before that when your department was being reduced by 10 people? Why was that not a public safety issue? You know where I was? I was the president of the union. I worked hand in hand with the city manager to try to work out the logistics so we can continue to save budgets. If you look at comparable beach patrols to ours, they run with a crew of 130 to 140. We have 90. So where was I? I was there in it with the city 
trying to make it work, trying to save money. I've been there all along. I've been there before you've sat in the seat. I've been running my Beach Patrol Union for 10 years. I've been in this fight for 10 years, standing up for the city. And no matter how much you try to paint me into some corner that I'm not, I do the right thing because I care about this town. I do the right thing because I try to find a balance between what the people of this community needs and what we need to do to provide a fair service. So you asked me where I was. I was the partner with the city making it work. I was the guy negotiating the contract. I was the guy trying to do everything in my power. The same thing I stand here today. That's why I say there's an information gap between what it is I do and what's happening in this council. So you're sadly mistaken, sir. Oh, excuse me. We're yeah. Mr. Sarah. Hey. So, hey, Rick. Where was that same courtesy extended to this council about working with them and trying to resolve problems? There was no hint of that. There was Vince Sarah standing up here in grandstanding and accusing people in the vilest fashion of having no concern for human safety and no regard for the departments of the city. That was the Vince Sarah that I met. Rick, and I, Rick that's, that's enough, let's, Bill. Let's not revise history. This wasn't the most transparent process from the beginning. The whole thing about public safety started, from my recollection, with a string of emails that said, we shouldn't really talk about this, um, back in 2012, 2013, early 13. So this kind of a, has emerged that it's more, and if you know where you're going, if you've got a direction, if you really want to implement something, why are we doing, once again, this whole kabuki theater thing? You know, let's, let's move on. If that is, you know, what you're going to do, you're going to whack the chiefs and put in a public safety person and do all that, we can discuss this forever. If that's the intent of the majority of this council, why are we going through all, all this? It, it's no. ridiculous. We just keep going round and round and round. No. And people's lives are hanging in the balance. I'm not talking about, you know, that, that someone that we're talking about safety tonight, but you have employees, you have all these other ideas, these extraneous things going on, part-time, all this. What exactly are you trying to accomplish? I think I asked that question earlier tonight. Could I just make a comment, Mr. Mayor, um, in response to the Beach Patrol? Uh, Mr. Sear made a couple comments I just want to follow up on. Um, in my tenure, first thing we did was met with Kip Emick, and we met with the leadership, the lieutenants, the leadership of the Beach Patrol. They expressed some concerns as far as input and so forth, specifically into the budget, specifically in how things are done. And I believe um, the word they used without being specific is they were the fill in the blank stepchild. Um, and I, they expressed some concerns about having input because they go home, October, the budget's done. They were presented with a budget they had no input on. So the things that were done in the course of the summer, um, to include a couple of weeks ago, I spoke to uh, Kip Emick about it. He asked about equipment. He asked about office things and computers. He asked about getting upgrades to the building. He asked about buying certain specific things such as higher lifeguard stands. He asked about more vehicles because they, they needed more vehicles. He was asking things about staffing issues. He was asking things about personnel issues. There was a lot of interrelation between myself and the manager and Kip and the lieutenants. My <coughs> manager and I both went down and met with the entire beach patrol and they said, and I quote, that's the first time that manager or the, anybody in the city has ever come down to the beach patrol and spoke to those gentlemen well, I, and I, ladies. I, I'm, just, I'm there every year. I, maybe they were just referring to city the uh, right. manager. I couldn't tell. That was a comment back <coughs> to us. This budget cycle, when the operating expenses budget was put in, it was done with consent and approval of Kip Emick. He was sent it. We had conversations. What do you need to include getting higher lifeguard stands, rescue boards, all the equipment that that gentleman said he needed for his department. That was done in conjunction with the department. So when Mr. Seary gets up and talks about there's no input and there's a lack of information, I'm not sure what he's talking about, but there was quite a bit of conversation between myself, the manager, and the leadership and the supervisors of the Beach Patrol throughout the course of my tenure here, well, and to include last week. And I appreciate that information, but let me point out, it sounds like Kip Emick is acting like a chief, and it sounds like the conversations he's having with you, well, he ought to be having with the city manager because that's the job of the city manager. It, it really, we don't need, we really don't need this. And, you know, you don't need this layer. It's, it's not something that's needed, and, and 
you know, it can be done in a city the size of Brigham. Well, my, my point, sir, was when Mr. Sierra comes up <coughs> and says there's no flow of information, my point was there's a significant flow of information and a significant flow back to the breach patrol, what they need, and quite honestly, with a very few exceptions, everything that the leadership and the supervisors of the beach patrol said they needed, they got, um, with the exception of, you know, 20 percent more staffing, which everybody would love to have. Right. But Mr. Remy came up with some solutions in which to cut them down to something that was still manageable for public safety. And there was a lot of interaction going back and forth. So the lack of information, quite right. honestly, <coughs> just is not factual in any way, shape, or form. Excuse me, Mayor. But could I also I, think Mr. Remick is demonstrating some managerial okay. skills. Could I? Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I agree with you. Could I address Agreed. Vince Sarah for a moment? Vince? <clears throat> Vince, you, you've, been, you've been the president of the Beach Patrol for 10 years? Okay. Okay. Well, my daughter served on the beach patrol. I believe she was part of your bargaining units a couple times. She was not involved in the uh, in the unions. Pardon? Uh, she did serve in the role of vice president of the beach patrol, but she was not involved in bargaining. No, okay. she was not on our bargaining council. Here's my point. And, and, and this is regarding what Councilman DeLucre said in, in, in terms of your presence and the way you've been acting this year. Since I've been on council, the previous city manager referred to your department as recreational employees. I took offense to that, okay? My daughter also started writing a weekly report on Absolutely. savings and, and, and trying to put the public out there, letting them know what they do because I respect the Beach Patrol. I believe that the Beach Patrol is probably one of our most important assets as, as, as important as fire and police because of what they do in the summer in the safety of this community and our residents and our visitors, okay? So you know I have an affection for, Absolutely. for the Beach Patrol because my son was over a 10-year guard and my, my daughter was also a senior guard, yeah. okay? During those years when the city manager was reducing staff, and the city manager referred to your department as recreational employees. The point <coughs> Councilman DeLucre is making, Vince, and I respect you, and you know, you and I have I know, spoken, absolutely. okay? Yeah. You never came up here to criticize city council, but that's what you're doing this year, and you're making it sound like the Democrats on, on this council are responsible for you being down the amount of people that you're down uh, for all of your woes. And uh, you also alluded that Ms. Blumenthal is speaking to someone. Well, I can assure you she's not speaking to me other than if you come to me and ask Absolutely. me a question, I'll relay that. She's certainly not asking council's advice on how to respond to y your, your, your crisis or your um, uh, whatever it is that you're asking. Uh, because if she did, then uh, you know, she wouldn't be pay capable of running, you know, this, uh, this community. So I just want to make the point. Um, you, you, ha you have a friend in me with the Beach Patrol, okay? Um, I agree with you that, you know, you, you guys do very, very good work. So, but I, I did want to make that point, that the point that, that Councilman uh, DeLucre was making is that y you've made it your position this year to criticize you know, this council for what they're doing. And you also know that that beach patrol, not, not that I'm saying that we're not gonna have chiefs, but that beach patrol ran without chiefs for many, many years with a captain. And you know, you made a comment in the paper that things weren't safe. And I, I took exception to that statement. You made a statement in the newspaper that you didn't know who had your back. I, I can pull it up, I, I don't have it with me. I actually made a statement here and I talked about you, you um, also the made safety. it in, in the I newspaper never said that the beach you also made it safe. in the newspaper oh, hang on a and Vince that hold on what, the one of the, one of the things that I want to make is that when you made that statement the only person that we were down was the chief and Captain Immick was taking his position okay Why so was he asked to step down as acting chief I I I have no idea I, that's I until until, the until this evening until this evening right. I was totally unaware that he so was asked to step wait, down can I say something um Kip never was demoted from that and you've seen all the analysis that I have so I've never still included acting chief, just so I'm clear. He, he yeah was last he's acting year chief. he's not assistant chief he's assistant chief because we couldn't use the acting title anymore you know okay. 
but the um, he was never removed down and council can tell you in all the analysis I've never included the Beach Patrol in any of that because even whatever title he is he still got that increase in salary but Kip is very easy to work with Kip is very proactive he came to the table he embraced the fact of working with Dan and Absolutely. Vince and all of us together he like the help of you know with the budget and so forth he, he's really a, you know a great leader I have to say about Kip and we have met a number of times. I think the only slow process that slowed us down a little bit was um, with um, you changing to like the National Union and then we had to hold off. But now we're going to meet again I think in February. So, And Vince too. I mean, you know, there was a lot of good suggestions that were came, but came and about. And you hear time and time again, you've heard from both of your officials that Chief Emmett does exactly the job that Councilman Kern asked for. Does exactly the job and that's my point. Y we all admit it. You're saying, this guy does a great job. Here's the guy who's got it right. But when we talk about the salary ordinance, lump everybody in together and you say, hey, everybody's got it wrong. That's my point. You ask why I've never had to come in here publicly and talk with council because I've always been able to handle the differences with the city manager. I've always been able to sit down with the city manager. And whether I liked what happened or not, we were able to resolve things. But there is something that has happened. And I don't blame you, but I look at the fact that since we've had this change, Something that has happened that has prevented the job that I've done the last 10 years from moving forward. And that's why I said, like, when she tells me, God, you're really trying to help me, I can tell she wants to do the right thing. So my question is this, what's stopping her? Because I don't know. You ask why I come in here? I come in here because I have questions. If I can't solve the problem at this level, I need to move up to the next level. And I think it's important that people understand what's going on because we get painted in this picture that we're these greedy people who just want money. It's not the case. There's another side to the story. And that's my concern, that that message isn't getting out there. I mean, you know, people really never even knew that we took furlough days. This is something that we implemented before Jennifer came in. It's something that she wanted, and it's something we wanted to continue to do. But when we do good things as an association or as a union, it never gets put out there. Everybody just talks about how the contracts go and these bully tactics, you know? I, I kept joking with the other guys. I was like, maybe you guys got to teach me something because if you guys can go in there and bully and get whatever the heck you want, teach me because it doesn't work that way for us. And that's my point. I'm here today because there's a problem, you know? And M Mr. Pololi, you know I respect you and I love your kids. I do. They are some of the greatest people that I've ever had the pleasure to serve with. I was very excited when Christina took a role in the association. Very excited. I am proud of everything they've ever done. They are outstanding leaders. Like your daughter probably would have been one of the first female lieutenants on the beach patrol. And I'm a guy who's further up the food chain. I would respect your daughter in that position because she has proven her worth. There are so many people on the beach patrol who are like that. We look at the fact is, what is the quality we need for our city and what do we need to do to keep things working? That's always been our position. We've always been able to handle it with the manager. But there's a problem. It's not getting done. And I don't blame her. I don't know where the problem is. My hope is that I can come in here and I can address this publicly. I can address it with you because I can't always come and talk to you guys. And I don't have the relationship with a lot of other people. But it's about solving the problem, not about making it worse. You know, and I was asked to give this a chance. I didn't speak for what, eight months? Did not step foot in here eight months. And if I came in, it was to listen. I tried to give it a chance, but there's a problem, and there's a situation where people's civil rights are being violated, you know, and these are the stories that I hear. I look at the situations that we go through, and I'm not going to drag out the dirty laundry, but there's a problem when there's laws in place, contract in place, city ordinance in place, and things aren't paid attention to, so I don't know what the problem is, and every time I've reached out to try to solve the problem in a reasonable manner, I get no response. Or it's told, no, we're just doing it this way. That is a problem. So you accuse me of grandstanding like I have some grand scheme. You absolutely do, I Mr. Just, Sarah. This what, is what's so, my scheme? So predictable. What's my scheme, You're there, sir? first of all, as your union representative. Secondly, you're there as a person who has clear political ambitions. And thirdly, you're there as a person who wants to present himself in a way which is inconsistent with the facts. The things you say publicly are a matter of record. The way you conduct yourself, and now you can spin it. What are the things I do privately? Now you stand in front of us and you say, there's a problem. I'm not saying it's Jennifer, but there is a problem. There is Meaning, a problem. there is a problem because, as you alluded to or hinted at earlier, you believe that perhaps members of council are controlling the city manager and telling her how to 
how to act and how to interact with your department. You talk about problems. Number one, I haven't heard anyone speak of the Beach Patrol. This has been a discussion about principally the fire department because that's the issue in the salary ordinance. Secondarily, <laughs> the police department. Very little discussion ever has happened about the Beach Patrol. The Beach Patrol did have a person in the role of chief, forget about whatever title he had, and did a great job, and everybody agrees with that. That's not an issue. Who is it so that's why out are we there? Not moving Who is it out then? there that is speaking ill Wait, of you? Who is it that's working against then? you? If you admit that our chief does an outstanding job and everything that this council would look for in a leader, why don't we move forward? Mr. On sure, that? if I so could interrupt a second, please. Absolutely, sir. Thank you. We keep referring to, to Mr. Ramick as if he's done something wrong. Mr. Ramick did it, in my opinion, in my limited experience here, has done a tremendous job this summer. Absolutely. Thank you. Where, and Mr. Ramick and I agree on, is the administrative aspects of it the budget portions of it, the line items that were consistently overexpended. Those are issues that, by Mr. Emick's own admission, were a concern because he had no experience in it. You're discussing day-to-day -day operations. Mr. Emick and, and lieutenants and the senior guards, in my explanation, and I've said this publicly, and I've said it privately, and I've said it to the manager, have done a phenomenal job Thank this you. summer. Phenomenal job. But we're talking day-to-day -day operations, which was never in question. We're talking the administrative aspects that Mr. Emick and the other leadership by their own admission, lacked in experience. That's where, when you keep asking about Mr. Remick, that is where the issues, and that's quite frankly where the connection was, and we worked together with those issues. I was dealing with the administrative aspects of it. He was dealing with the day-to-day, -day, as you're well aware of, he's dealing with Absolutely. the day-to-day. -day. Where you and I went to, quite honestly, I guess awry, is with the drug testing procedures. And you had an issue about the RAM drug testing. Okay, we have difference of opinion. That difference of opinion will get resolved. Are but you aware not, that we're actually not saying, we're you bring not up the drug here. testing procedure? Are you aware that actually I started contacting the city manager in May to try to work out a stronger drug testing no, policy? Um, what I'm asking, what I'm saying to you wait, is, wait, no, but you bring up a finish, policy. Let me finish my answer. We're talking about Mr. Remick and his administrative abilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, I'm not talking about his day-to-day -day operations. His day-to-day, -day, we're very good. As far as you keep talking, about, we're going awry, and you don't know where the where the, the, the issues are yeah. coming from. You and I have had several discussions, if you want to call them that, where we disagree. So mm -hmm. if you want to point the finger at me in that one, point the finger at me. You don't have to beat around the bush. Right. Now, you want to blame, them, blame me for it, blame me. But you and I have had differences of opinion on several issues. And it's a difference of opinion. That's why they call it differences. Sure. But nobody's, nobody, I certainly have never well, disparaged Mr. Remick in any way, shape, or form. Right. Right. Any, uh, any other comments right. on the salary ordinance? I'll step down. Thank you, Thank Vince. You. Yes, ma'am. You have great patience. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Mary York, and I live on um, 14th Street, 332 14th Street. And I want to um, thank everyone in here for loving Brigantine, thanking our elected officials, our hired officials, and everybody. We all love Brigantine. We love the way it is. But you know, tough times. You need to talk into yeah, you, you have to use the microphone. Mic. Yeah. <laughs> tough times uh, call for tough choices. And no one wants to have to make the decisions that every private corporation, every public um, entity, and every individual has to make when the money is lessened and there isn't any money, or there's not enough money, or we have to finance a, a budget that isn't balanced by incurring more debt. I do believe and agree that we have to consider every option. And one of those options that everybody always considers shared services and part-time work. So at this point, I trust the integrity of everyone in this room to make the decision. In light of the budget that we have, in light of the effect of still being safe and still being strong, um, and I think now the decision is before our council, and um, God bless. Thank you. Uh, Jim? Uh, James Mackey, uh, 1325 uh, Varden Road. I'm uh, reminded of, uh, of a saying by Oscar Wilde sitting here for these last few hours, and it says, uh, I am so clever that sometimes I don't understand a single word I'm saying. And uh, with that said, I hear that for months and months, We've heard, I haven't made a decision on, uh, on whether I want a chief or not. 
that's what we've heard since, uh, since uh, July 1st. We're still waiting on chiefs. We haven't made a decision, haven't made a decision. Get off the pot and make a decision. It's either chiefs or it's not chiefs. I'm going for chiefs because I think it's the best way for the uh, city uh, to go in the departments. But make a decision and stop this uh, fooling around. <clears throat> Ralph? Gentlemen, ladies, uh, Ralph Latrella, 707 Bobby Jones Road. Um, I say bring back our chiefs. Brigantine has always had a fabric and a personality of its own. And something happened here that tore a hole in our fabric. We're all here for the same thing, and it's the safety of our community. And I, as I've said many times, you cannot have a unit without a leader. You cannot have a police department without a chief. Um, you cannot have a fire department without a chief. You cannot have a beach patrol without a chief. We need leaders in our community. When the Democrats came on, I was happy. I was glad, then I thought, well, this is good government. But I don't know what happened, why they're so conflicting in our community. Uh, the only people I think that really care about our community up there at our council is Mayor Gunther, Andy, Lisa, Joe Picardi. Tony Puella has been cited for fraud in his business. Dr. Kern is, doesn't really say much of anything. Rick DeLuca, he thinks he's in a court of law and, and addresses us like we're in a jury summer, summarization. Um, just bring back our chiefs. It's good for our community, and let's all try to get along and get the budget straightened out and just bring back our chiefs. Thank That's you. Right. Sally? Sally Suey, 805 Bobby Jones Road. I don't want any answers back because I probably won't get any. I just want to state a fact. Morale in the fire department is bad now. You're going to go part-time with non-union guys, with union guys. What do you think that's going to be? Do you think they're going to have their back? What Andy said, I agree with, whether the union does or not. Times are tough, I know that. We're complaining at school because we have to pay more benefits, but that's the way life is. Do it, start three, two guys. Start them lower, make their levels higher. My son just got on Camden Police Department. His top salary won't be till he's 25 years. Why can't something like that be done? It's not going to work with part-time guys working with union guys, because I'm going to tell you something. I've been in the union for 47 years, and that guy's going to ask me a question, I'll say, and that's how it's going to be. It's going to be worse then than it is now. And all I can say is I'm glad my husband's out, because I feel sorry for the wives and the kids whose husbands are going to work every night with not enough guys to protect their backs. Thank you, Sally. <laughs> Tiger? Ty Platt, 157 Coolidge Avenue, Epsecon, represent the fire department. Ms. Blumenthal, you stated twice up here, part-time firefighters are going to be required to have health benefits. Is that going to be a condition of employment? No, no. Uh, the point is, is that if it's part time, we as a city and taxpayers would not be responsible to pay the, the health benefits for that employee. Okay, so they won't be required to have health benefits. Okay, um, Mr. Puella, um, you had said that um, you know about us stating uh, you know part timers going to be working a day here, a day there. That's what we were told in the captain's meeting last month. We were told the part-timers are going to be used to fill in occasionally a couple times, maybe once a month a guy might work, maybe once every three months. It seems that this plan is changing, you know, daily, and I just learned of this new plan 
as you did. Well, you learned a lot earlier than I did, but I just learned the new plan here. So we are in the dark. We know they want to go to part-timers, but they're not telling us anything. You know, oh, it's a day here, day there, now they're working 30 hours a week. And I just did the math, replacing seven full-time firefighters that work an average of 42 hours a week with nine part-time firefighters working 30 hours a week comes up 24 hours short. So you need 10 part-time firefighters, I guess, to cover that shift, because I did the math and, uh, and your numbers are off. So, you know, we are, and to, to reference Mr. Pappas' comments about the average EMT makes $18 an hour, and he said the average firefighter makes $40 an hour. We are also uh, cross-trained dual role firefighter EMTs. So I guess, Mr. Pappas, we're making $22 an hour to be a firefighter and $18 to be an, an EMT. Um, so what's the average firefighter that's not an EMT in the state make? Compare that with what the average EMT makes, and it's probably more than what the firefighter EMT in Brigantine makes. We are dual trained. Some of us are triple trained as fire inspectors. Some of us are on the dive team. All these functions that we serve for that same salary, we are serving that. And, it, and there's been multiple studies that the most efficient and effective way to run a fire department is the way we're doing it, fire-based EMS. And that's proof. Do the studies yourself. Google it. Look at it. I'll give you the facts. Chief Hole felt very, very firm about that, that fire-based EMS was the way to go. Now, our salaries are dictated by the state of New Jersey. We negotiate them in good faith. I mean, arbitrators' rules are there and all that stuff, so you know, obviously we're gonna, we'll, we would never negotiate in an open forum like this because that just wouldn't be fair to do. But you know, we will sit down and negotiate. We, w we do want to affect change and do things, the right things to do. Um, would you sit down with all council, executive session? I don't see why not. Thanks. I don't see why not. Um, yeah, Tony, you said that, um, the council, the, the city manager wasn't talking to you, you know, when Vince was standing up here, I, you know, you said, I don't know who she's talking to. She's not talking to us. She told the four captains point black that blank that she doesn't do anything without talking to you guys. So I don't, I don't know where the miscommunication is. Ty, she speaks to us in executive session as a body, and obviously, I'm sure she does. Um, we go into her office um, uh, on many occasions if we have questions about uh, things pertaining to the um, to the budget, to how negotiations are going, uh, et cetera. So we do have communication, okay. But it's not like we, we're certainly not telling her, you know, how to run the department. No, okay. The city. I would hope not. What occurs is at the beginning in executive session, I present to them that I'm going to contract negotiations, and I ask all of mayor and council to send me, or tell me at the executive session, or send me through email, or call me things that they like to see negotiated in the contracts, and that's what they do. At the point we have some kind of reconciliation with the union, I start giving status updates, and that's okay. where it is. We've only had our first session, I believe, our second sessions on the 21st. Right. Now, I, I'd like to also point out that the Brigantine Fire Department, that is a fire department and an EMS department and dive team and fire inspectors and a multitude of other things that we do for this city, costs the average homeowner less than $1.50 a day. The average homeowner. That's what it costs to have that, to have that insurance policy. You said $80 an hour rolls out on the ambulance. Well, if you're laying there gasping for your life, I think $80 an hour is a pretty good price to pay for, for you to look up at me and know that I'm going to save you. I think that's a pretty good price. Are you putting a price on that? No, he put the price on that. Excuse me? Uh, Don't try tiger, to twist tiger, my tiger, words, tiger, my friend. Tiger, he tiger, put tiger, it. Tiger. You're right. I'm sorry. Uh, on March 20th, 2013, during council comments, Councilman Picardi, you stated that all council is doing for public safety director is gathering information on the public safety director position, and you're not have a formed opinion one way or the other on the topic. So I, I ask you, how is the gathering of the information coming? Have you gathered your information and made a, an opinion almost a year later? It wasn't a year ago that I said that. March 20th, 2013, That's I'm holding council's minutes. Okay, yes, time it was. flies when you're having fun. I'm holding here. the minutes right here. It really does, time flies. Yes. I'm starting to form an opinion. Starting, okay, so it took 10 months yes. to form an opinion. Because I've gone back and forth and back and forth because I see pros and cons 
on both sides of the issue. That's why. And I've been listening to what people have been saying and listening to what my fellow council members have been saying. But, but and all of us have been doing that. How much more could we say? What, what, what else do you want to hear, whether there's pros or cons of having a chief or a public safety director? You've been given information from we the PBA. We haven't brought it up because we haven't come to a consensus, the actual date when we're going to have a vote. That's what's happened. Okay. <clears throat> Councilwoman McClay, you stated you have not made a decision yet. And uh, the discussion came up and it's currently in a salary ordinance. Have you made a decision yet? Ten months later. I'm pretty close to making my decision on tonight's salary ordinance, I can tell you that. So that's it. You're the salary ordinance as a whole, but not as having a chief or director the of public manager safety. The flexibility she needs to run this city. Well, the city manager just said she didn't want to make chiefs because she was afraid of a commission coming in. So she wanted to hold off. So she's got the flexibility. Sounds like she's not using it. Right now, there are positions in here. Whether Absolutely. they get filled or not. We I, don't th I know. think we know what's going to happen with I these. don't know. I'll move down the line. Councilman Kern, know. you comment it. You will second the motion when it's put before you to direct the city manager to advertise for the public safety director position, which we never did. And then you said the council is exploring the idea and they need data to see if the position would be favorable or not. You stood right up here after a council meeting and said, we want a businessman. We want somebody that can, has experience in fire, police, and beach patrol. And then your words, not mine, were, I don't think that person exists. And I said to you, I don't either. You said that, not me. Right here you said that after a meeting. So have you made a decision? Yes. You have? Okay. You care to share or not yet? Not yet. Okay. Transparency, I get it. All right. Councilman Palula, you stated that council. Ty, I will me? share this. Buddy. Okay. I would love to hear it. What I said was, we need a partner. I also said that we were still looking at the idea of having chiefs. So at least the majority of council, whether it be I and four other people, three other people, the majority of council wants chiefs. We're looking for the right people. So one you're the, looking. And one, of the, and one of the reasons that we're looking for the right people is once you appoint a chief, okay, you can't get rid of that chief very easily. And we want the chief that's going to smoothly implement what you want the, implemented, correct? Yes. Not, what, yeah, right. What, what so I, smoothly implement what you, what you want to do, le, uh, not what, what's better for the department. Are you talking or am I talking? No, you're talking. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Thank you. We need somebody that will smoothly implement the financial crisis that we find ourselves in in 2013 in 2014. So, was Jim Hall that man? We had, I had confidence in Jim he Hall. You did. Yet yeah, you never made him chief, but you had confidence in him. Tiger, how many chiefs are we allowed, you know, let's put this to rest. How many chiefs are we allowed to have at one time? One. Who was chief in 2012? Chief for goalie was on terminal leave. When did Chief Regoli finish his terminal leave? February 1st, 2013. When did, and, and at that point in time, at that point in time, you already brought up the minutes of March. Mm -hmm. So at more. that point in time, we, uh, we already knew that Chief Regoli was gone, the Beach Patrol was without anybody, and the police department was without anybody. We found ourselves in a unique position. The position was we didn't have any chiefs. Should we right away just appoint Jim Hall or should we look into the possibility of having a public safety director? We decided to look into that possibility. We gathered enormous data, whether you appreciate it or not. Oh, I do the, appreciate it. The members I'd love of to hear about it. The members of council spent a long time with the appropriate people, including yourself and members of uh, the fire uh, departments of various cities and the state. So we gathered lots of data. By this time, however, the playing field had changed. It changed because of a press article the week before Memorial Day. So that article changed everything. It changed everything for me. Okay, so a week before Memorial Day, a press article changed everything, and now 10 months later, here we are. 
you're, you're talking to me versus a majority. <laughs> okay. Um, Council Pamela, you stated the council respects the residents and you want the employees to be safe, but they have the position of public safety director in your ordinance. And the uh, previous city manager acted in that capacity and you said uh, you're gathering information to make the city more cost effective. Ten months later, how, how's the information Ty, gathering Colonel, going? Ty, Captain, uh, you, you're aware that I met with uh, Acting Chief uh, Hall, right? I am aware of that, uh, yeah. Also met with Acting Chief uh, Cox. Mm -hmm. uh, and I gave them, at, at, you know, seeing them, asking permission to see them, um, I expressed to them that um, the research that I had done, um, I was in favor of chiefs. However, I asked them, how can we make the departments give us the, the um, end result that we needed in terms of efficiency and saving money, okay? Um, met with uh, Chief Hall, April 9th, I think it was, I have my notes here. Met with Acting Chief Cox. Um, I took my family to Italy on a family trip and I came back. Chief Hall was the last person I spoke to before I went on my trip. So I've had communications with him. Uh, that's what I said to both of those uh, individuals. So the chief, acting chief that I spoke to passed away, and the acting chief that uh, I spoke to uh, was demoted. Uh, and things broke down. So I haven't had that opportunity to, um, to you know, uh, speak with any acting chiefs or obviously having dialogue with your departments. But that's the conversation that I had with both of those gentlemen. So, so what is taking so long, everyone? I, I don't understand this. Because that I think I think Chief Hall passed away on June second, mm -hmm. seven months ago. What, Ty, what are we Ty, doing, Ty? You want things just the way they have always been. You want full-time people. You want us to replace those full-time people. That's correct. And we're telling you that there has to be change. There simply has to be change. Okay. The uh, money isn't there. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask now. If you have ideas as to change you certainly had a year to bring those ideas to you this is not today's crisis financial crisis we talked about this last february last march last april last may when the budget was passed so uh it's not just us that has delayed things okay most of us want chiefs but, but you're waiting for the right partner who can do. implement cost savings and efficiency measures and tell us right. that they can that do it and has the respect of his men and has those well, abilities. Let's do this then. Let's get in an executive session. Let's bring in the leadership in those departments who are eligible to be chiefs and let's conduct interviews as a body. That's not no. that's And not. then with the manager there, because how are you going to know you have this partner? If you don't communicate with the person on a daily basis. Well, you don't well, see the product of what they do. H how are you going to know? We s Captain, if I could, please. Sure. Um, just to go back to what you were saying a minute ago before you did your down the line. You had mentioned about triple E certified. Absolutely agree with you. I've said publicly and I've said privately that there are some absolutely highly trained, highly professional members of the fire department and police department. But the thing you left out of your argument was, first of all, yes, you are certified in some cases inspectors, but there's a stipend associated with that. So there's a cost factor. You talk about the dive team, highly trained, highly qualified, but there's an overtime cost associated with that. Those were all dollar figures. You refer to being kept in the dark. The captains, as I've gone to you repeatedly over the course of the last seven months and got input, I went to you on December 3rd. We had an eight and a half hour meeting, if you recall. I recall. Okay. Um, three of you which were on overtime for eight and a half hours because that was how we had to meet and that's fine but of course that meeting and before that the captains asked me to give them my plan for staffing the per diem people and if you recall I said to you folks I wanted to get your input because it was clearly important before I could even go forward and present any more information in the course of that meeting you personally brought up some very good points the other captains brought up some very good points which have now since been folded into that plan that you keep referring to it so it would have been short-sighted for me to give you my plan without having first gotten your input and the input of the other of the supervisors and some of the rank and file because they all have good ideas. So the plan you keep talking about changing, I said to you folks for a long time to include December 3rd, it's in flux because I had not had a chance to get the four captains together and get your ideas and input as a group. 
And instead of playing risk down the line saying, look, Captain Platt, what do you think? Captain McGuire, what do you think? Captain Bordenar, what do you think? I want to get you four together so we could hash it out as professionals and adults. And that's what we did. And again, you folks came up with a lot of very good ideas that have since been put into that. So the changes you keep referring to, there's nothing to fire about it. It was based upon input, in this case, that you folks had given me, again, good input. You talk about, I've asked you several times, is there any way that we can ratchet this back? Is there anything we can do? You have repeatedly told me, no. There is nothing we can do to ratchet this, the, the level of contentious is back. Okay. You keep talking about having good ideas. I've gone to all the captains, almost all the lieutenants, in some cases had just conversations offline with firefighters. What do you all think about what are certain ideas? Because you guys, as you've pointed out repeatedly, are the ones down here every single day. You have good ideas. I've tried to seat out those good ideas repeatedly. And in many cases, I've gotten them. But because I can't get everybody together without paying overtime, it makes it very problematic to get everybody in a group to sit down. It becomes very costly. So those are some of the arguments that get left out of it when you say you've been kept in the dark. You really haven't been kept in the dark. Nothing's been changing without anybody knowing it. Every time you folks come in, your captains come in, I talk to everyone of these every day. And any changes that have come up, the four captains or the lieutenants today are well aware of them, just like we talked about the fire truck today. So it, it's not a question of being kept in the dark. It makes it very problematic when you work every fourth day, and if you take off, it then turns another week to keep everybody in the loop every single minute of every single day. You know full well that there's dozens of emails that go out to the Army, probably ad nauseum, guys don't even want to open them up anymore because I sent them out to get the information out because the schedule becomes very problematic. One in four days makes it very difficult to catch up with everybody. And again, you add vacation time to that, you add person days in that, it stretches out that much further. So there's, there's no hidden, we're not, I'm not telling you something. So I just think we need to add that part so to it. So today was the first day you found out about this new? Okay. All right. We're going off topic. I, I, Can you sum up, Tyler? One last thing. I, I, I don't even Delucri. know how to keep track of the time at this point. I'm uh, sorry. You, you had commented at this, this meeting on March 20th that you were, uh, you'd recommended or suggested, I'm sorry, a staffing analysis. Has that been completed? Has anybody done a staffing analysis in these departments? Well, you, the whole story, as you may remember, if you were here, if you're just going by the minutes, maybe you don't remember, was that I asked almost as soon as I took council, took seat on council in 2011, were there to be an analysis because I recognized then budget issues were going to be serious in 2012 and beyond. The response in 2012, when my party was not in the majority, was that we didn't need a staff analysis. This was after the manager, then new manager, Blumenthal, went out and got some quotes from people to do a staff analysis. I said then, and I said in 2013, and I would say now, I would much prefer to have had a staff analysis. That was resisted. It was resisted by, in 2012, Ms. Mayor Gunther and his ma then majority. It was resisted by the departments. They didn't want that to happen either. And it didn't happen. In 2013, we ran into other issues. There was a, uh, which I at the time said was a total charade, and it was. But there was a direction by members of council to the manager that the manager should conduct a staffing analysis. Now, I'm sure you are, would not tell me that you believe that Jennifer Blumenthal is qualified to do a staffing analysis of your department or the police department. No, I don't. I we, don't feel we'd that. agree on that. Absolutely. That's what the manager herself said. I am not qualified to do that. Nonetheless, the majority said, let's make her do that. Well, that was a guarantee that there would not be, could not be, a proper analysis, staffing analysis done. So that's where we are. We don't have that. With R the staffing Rick, analysis, what you left out, though, is that the staffing analysis was going to cost eighty thousand dollars. Fine, Phil, it's going to cost uh, maybe right. that was one of the prices. So would it cost eighty thousand dollars? That's a wise decision, maybe or maybe not, because now we have serious issues to consider about the future direction of the departments and their staffing levels and what they need. We get, and you know, I, I complimented the police earlier to an extent because they did give me hard data, or what they deem to be hard data in their analysis, um, I really haven't gotten that from the fire department. And it's not as if the fire department wasn't aware that there was discussion and consideration of the possibility of doing part-timers. And it was not as if the department didn't recognize that you had a number of retirees coming and that was going to take your number down from where it was. And what I would want to have, what I would have wished to have had through a staffing analysis and what I would still gratefully accept tomorrow would be something concrete, something that I can look at that's objective from the department saying we need to have X number of people and if they need to be full-time versus part-time or whatever that may be. But give us something. I mean, you say it's been X number of months and there hasn't been a decision made.
true. It's been that number of months. What's happened in the meantime is a lot of different things. The budget picture keeps changing. Everything ties to everything else. It's not as if you make a decision or could make a decision, or I should say should make a decision, on chiefs and leave out everything else. Leave out staffing. Leave out scheduling. Whatever other factors come into it. Leave out the impacts of the ongoing negotiations. You can't do that because then you don't come up with a full answer and you might very well come up with a wrong answer. That's my view of it. One other thing I see in the meantime, which we didn't know in March of last year that we were going to have, is the fact that there has been for six, seven months a person in the position of Director of Public Safety. I think I am correct in stating that not everyone in the departments has at all times been working to facilitate Mr. Howard's success. That's safe? That's your opinion. That is my opinion. That's based on information. Um, I think it's a short-sighted approach, but we're not here to debate that. The no, point no. is, I do have communications, not daily, Andy, but communications with uh, Mr. Howard. I understand what he's trying to accomplish, the pressures he's under, and the work that he's doing. Would there, would, does that sway me that there should be definitely a public safety director? No, but it's certainly a factor. A public safety director, even when he's not getting full cooperation because people, frankly, don't want him, can still possibly work. But I haven't made a, a decision. But on the other hand, we're talking about chiefs. The chief model certainly works. It's worked for a lot of years. Does it work financially? To me, still an open question. Does it work in terms of the people who would be the likely candidates to be in that position? Uh, I'm a little disturbed when I see references to what is perceived to be or presented to be the council majority's desire to have a rat or a spy or whatever else in the department. Because partner, I believe, is the word. Partner is the word partner. that it should be, and partner is what it needs to be. But okay. when I say partner, when Frank I says partner, somebody else says spy or rat. Right. So. I've used you know, my that, five minutes, I'm sure. Yeah, Thank that you. to Thank me you. is not Thank approaching you. it in good Thank faith. You. Ralph. Mayor. It's a, uh, sure. Mayor, then after that, I'd like you to come to me if you would. Sure. First of all, I want to apologize to Councilman Paul about his business transactions. What I said was unwarranted and uncalled for. That's not why we're here. Uh, Second of all, uh, let me give you like a scenario. You're going to save money, you're going to cut some budget, you're going to bring in part-time police officers, part-time firefighters. As the young man said, um, you can't put a price on that. Criminals have a network, just as we have a network. I've said this many times at our awards night. These gentlemen, the policemen and firemen, are highly trained professionals. They protect our city. If the word gets out across the bridge, that we are not as protected as we were prior, and you had a home invasion, and you had to wait 15 or 20 minutes for a policeman, a $15 an hour class two policeman, who is, does a good job, but I would like to see a highly trained professional respond to my emergency situation. Um, this not going, you know, how do, you, how do you put a price on that? Before you make your decision, think six years down the road when it gets out to the criminal elements on the other side of the bridge that I always said, if I was a criminal, I would not ply my trade in Brigantine. We had a reputation for that. We had a reputation of being tough and police cars all over and sometimes four or five, but it's worth the safety to our families and our children because that's what the police and fire department do. You do not, before you make your decision and cut this and cut that, think about the safety of our community. Thank, Thank you. you. John? I didn't see him. Not yet, not yet. We're still on the uh, salary ordinance. Oh, I'm sorry, Fred. Sorry. Hold on one second. Fred? Just, just a word of caution. I would caution counsel just to be careful in terms of the nature of this discussion. We are in negotiations uh, with the collective bargaining units and there's been conversation and dialogue between the parties. And while I think that dialogue is well intended, even though there's an element of disagreement on certain points, as well intended as it appears, and we have references to inviting 
the collective bargaining units into a, another form of negotiation. I would just issue a word of caution that these things at some point could be interpreted as influencing the negotiations. And I certainly would never seek to counsel the, the bargaining units, but they are here without their, their representatives tonight. Just please be careful with where you are going and make sure that this ongoing dialogue does not cross the line between well-intended public comment on an ordinance and get too close to the negotiation aspect. As to everyone in this room, that's a caution. I think you should be careful. Thank you, Fred. John, I know we're not negotiating with you. That's a John Johnson, 36, Coquille Beach Drive. I love it here, it's great, best place I ever lived. Uh, I don't want to insult anybody. I want to tell you about my opinion. Uh, a lot of people like me that I socialize with have the same opinion. So I think we're a little bit different because in the 90s and up until 2007, a lot of people like me in their 50s or 60s or 70s bought a home, bought a vacation home, bought an investment property in Brigantine. Before we did that, we all looked at the city, came over the bridge, and bam, it's immaculately clean. Thanks, Public Works. We start to socialize with people. We go to the beach. We find out, man, this beach patrol, they're there. If you talk to them, they're polite. They want to do their job. You interact maybe at the Elks with some firemen or cops or at the VFW, and you learn in a short period of time. This is a place that has fantastic services people that are dedicated and care and do their job. They do their job because they were trained, they came up through the ranks, and they respect their chief, and he issues the orders. They respect Brigantine, they respect the residents of Brigantine. So that was what formed opinions for me and lots of other people in that time frame, and you know the real estate market bears that as so. Now I've been here I've been reading the paper. I don't come to many council meetings, but listening to everything I heard tonight, my point of view is I don't have any relative that works for the city of Brigantine. So my opinion is of a group that I described to you. We would like you to find a way, make chiefs in these departments. Let's show them the respect that we owe them. Don't hire part-time people. That dilutes the quality of service that they're going to provide to us, means less quality in the safety areas and less quality in the safety in their own groups and departments. So please don't hire part-time people. Find a way to get the chiefs in the positions. My opinion, get rid of the public safety director, send them home. And I don't want to insult you. I have no bad feelings towards anybody here but it's gone on too long. What you said tonight, Phil, might be the answer. Bring in the group and you all negotiate. What I've heard is Jennifer's been negotiating, Tony's been negotiating, but it didn't get us anywhere and I don't want to insult you. So maybe your idea is the best idea, but let's get it done, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any, anyone else? Tyler, are you coming back? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. I'm not here to disrespect the firefighters again, but uh, I like what the city manager brought up about if we hire part-time people. I'm still certified just like the firefighters here in Brigantine. I'm held to the same standard. I live in this town. But it would give me a chance to get my name in the fire department to find a replacement in the years if the money comes back. So who would you rather have? being a full-time fireman, somebody that's been a part-time and worked for the city, or a stranger that, you know, you're gonna give a full-time position. I like that idea. I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to take anybody's job, but this gives people an opportunity to get into the fire department that may have not had the opportunity before with the certifications that I have. So, you know, whether people disagree with me or not, that's how I feel. I feel that, you know, it would give me a way into the fire department and getting to know our fire department and getting to know our community better. I've lived here for 20 years. So I like her idea. That way you could fill the positions later if the money comes back or if somebody steps down, you're filling it with a part-timer instead of somebody new. Thank you, Tyler. Oh boy. 
Uh, yes, Joan. Oh, Joan's behind Joan's you. Behind you. Oh, that's all right. Are you you want to speak on the salary ordinance? No. Okay, hold on. A <laughs> Joan does. Joan does. There we go. <laughs> Not. We're getting there. Uh, not yet. I'll look tomorrow. <laughs> I'm Joan Reese Evans, 1419 Bayshore Avenue. What I think everybody is forgetting is that we've just come through this tremendous storm and the effects of it. And I think we're all at a low point. We, we're having spent all our money. We just don't have all the spare cash we should have. So as far as I can see, we're looking for a temporary fix. Hopefully, it's not a permanent fix. But um, if we could just get ourselves past this few years, then, you know, with uh, temporary people or whatever it is, you know, however we manage to do it. You know, I hate this business of everybody's arguing with everybody else. What's the best thing? And you're not right, and you're not right. We've got to do something to get us through these few years, and perhaps after that, we can have the Cadillac services that we, we currently get from our fire and our police, because they are wonderful people, and I would like to see them all come back again and have the same services. But I, I realize that we're going through a tough period at this time, and we're all hurting, and nobody's got any money. So um, perhaps we should look at it from that angle. Thank you, Joe. OK. I'm going to close the uh, public portion on the uh, salary ordinance. Already? Any uh, further council discussion? About the salary ordinance? Yes. <laughs> I, I fell asleep there. <laughs> salary ordinance, yes. Uh, yeah, I, I have some discussions on the salary ordinance. Um, again, I know we all, we're all trying to save money. We're all, you know, everybody up here is trying to save a dollar for the taxpayer. But what, at what price? I, I, I just see the savings is not greater than what, what's going to happen to the fire department, police department, and, and possibly the beach patrol. So I like to make a motion here. And I like to put this thing to bed tonight. Uh, so next month we can get on with, or in the next meeting we can get on with something. We're not talking about the salary ordinance. One way or another we should vote yay or nay tonight on, my motion would be, is, and no disrespect again, because <laughs> uh, me and Mr. Howard, we, we, we talk, we, we're, we're, we're uh, okay with each other, I think. <laughs> so uh, I would eliminate the public safety director, the part-time public safety director, the fire official, that's $185,000 right there. Um, Bring back a full-time CFO. Me and Phil have been talking about this. $55 million run through the city. And to try pinch pennies that way, there's other things we could possibly do. And eliminate, now this is a motion, and uh, eliminate all part-time firefighters from our salary ordinance. So I'm looking for a second. I'll second that. Yes. McClay? No. McCarty? No. Delupri? No. Paloa? No. Kern? No. Mayor Gunther? Yes. So next month we're going to be sitting here doing the same thing over and over again. Unbelievable. Yeah. Okay, now we have the ordinance that we've, uh, we've had the public hearing on, which is ordinance number 17. Um, are there any any uh, further discussions on this ordinance? Well, let's make a motion to have a public safety director. No, we, we need to vote on this one right oh, now. Oh, come on. <laughs> Gibson? No. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Delupri? Yes. Palella? Yes. Kern? Yes. Mayor Gunther? I, I have a question for the solicitor 
Are you able to put positions in the salary ordinance that don't exist in the code? I believe you can have them in there, yes, but you're not going to be able to hire until you actually create the position. Okay. And does that, does that go to... Well, let, let me well we, I, like I said, we eliminated, that, <laughs> deliberately eliminated from the ordinance, deputy police chief and deputy fire chief. Um, yeah. I mean, and, and I see that they are back in the salary ordinance, but right. you cannot appoint a deputy police chief or a deputy fire chief until you go back into your municipal code and recreate right. that position. So you're adding positions. We're, I mean, this the, effectively, we're the, adding no, positions. No, the, the salary ordinance will not add the position. The right. salary ordinance provides for a funding source if at some point in the future city council chooses to recreate the position and put it back in the municipal code. But that okay. person cannot be appointed because that position does not exist today. You'd have to recreate it first, put it back in the ordinance, and then there already would be in place a funding mechanism through the salary ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Uh, I'm voting no, and uh, you know, once again, I, I believe it's time to uh, put the Chiefs back in place and uh, look for some alternatives to restructure some departments and save money that way. But um, I think we're heading down a slippery slope that is not going to be good for the residents of Brigantine. Motion carried. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? Consent. Yes, now we have regular public comment, I think. Consent, uh, no, consent agenda. Oh, I'm sorry, the consent agenda. We're going we're, we're to get to you. We're going to get you. Okay, we move to uh, the consent agenda, which is resolution 2014-20, the real estate tax refund. Um, resolution 2014-21, the rental inspection refund. We have the historical society flea market request and the Elks raffle license, uh, 681 and 682. Can we have a motion and second, please? So moved. Second. second. We have roll call. Simpson? Yes. McClay? Yes. McCarty? Yes. Chalukri? Yes. Palella? Yes. Hearn? Yes. Mayor Gunther? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, I'm going to open a meeting for uh, public comment on any topics. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> please, uh, <coughs> please use the microphone. State your name and address for the record. Yeah, my <coughs> name is uh, Joseph Opalaka, 5206 Harbor Beach. Um, I'm not a longtime resident of uh, Brigantine. I've lived here about eight years. Uh, this is my first city council meeting. Well, welcome. And it's going to be the last. <laughs> um, I ha I've heard some comments tonight that there are no alternatives to this <coughs> situation going on with mostly the fire department. Well, I've uh, been thinking out loud with some people that I know in Brigantine and I've I've come up with some ideas and everybody said geez yeah you ought to go to City Council well here's my idea for the fire first of all number one Brigantine is not a it's not a hotbed of criminal activity number two I don't think we have a whole heck of a lot of fires here does anybody have any comment about that Do well we do we have fires here frequently, like what, one a month? Well, we, we have fires. Um, one a month? I don't know if it's one a House month. House fires? House Maybe. fires. A couple, couple of things that, that occur. In my All estimation, right. I'm not a professional firefighter. All one right. is the response time um, <coughs> enables a small situation to be extinguished quickly so you don't have a larger problem. I understand. And there's a cost right. attached to that, of course. Yes. Right. And um, the other is we do a very good job in fire prevention and fire education piece right. that, that creates that situation. My idea is two, well, two ideas. There are a lot of communities, both offshore and the barrier island communities that have volunteer fire departments. Why can't we have a volunteer fire department? Now, I'm not asking for comments. I'm just throwing this out as an idea. Why can't we have a volunteer fire department? Number two, I think there was a comment made earlier about um, combining services, different communities combining services. Um, and, and you know, when I graduated from college many years ago, I worked for about 10 years as a management consultant and I did what used to be called an efficiency expert. 
And whenever we went into a company to um, reorganize and cut staffing and so forth, one of the questions we always asked when we went into a company was, does this department, is it necessary that it exist? Okay, can we, what would happen if we just eliminated that department? Why can't we subcontract out our fire department to Atlantic City? They're right across the bridge. They make $20,000 a man more than that. I'm sure. Go ahead. Just a minute. Joe. 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 I'm, just, I'm just throwing right. out some ideas, okay? And you guys can talk about it all you want later on. Probably going to, you know, not, not do anything about it. But when I see each year the salaries that the employees, most of the employees in, in Brigantine make, I'm shocked. I can't believe the money that we're paying policemen and firemen in this town. And it's not just the salaries, it's the benefits and it's the pensions. We're going to have to pay these people when they retire 40, 50, 60, 70,000 dollars a year for the rest of their life. No? Well, it's How a state, state, state pension. It, we don't, Once it, no. they leave, we don't pay them at all. Who pays them? Pay for three years. The state, well, the employees, can, the employees contribute, and the, the state makes up the difference. State of New Jersey. Right. State all of New right. Jersey, yes. Right. Anyway, well, I'm not. I'm not here to debate the state pension system. I'm just right. trying to explain to you that's where it comes from. Yeah, I, I, I would think, Mr. So. Mr. Marcosi, this gentleman is speaking. I would think somehow, Brigantine. He asked has me a to, question, Mr. Marcosi. I would think somehow Brigantine has to somehow pay the, the the pensions of these people. I don't know how exactly. Right. The municipality makes a contribution while the employee okay, is there. Working. We go. Right. There we go. Okay. Uh, why Why can't we just? Eliminate the fire department and sub it out to Atlantic City. They're right across the bridge. Well, can I? Can I and, please and, and again, I'm, I'm not looking for a solution or an answer. I'm just right. saying I'm throwing these two ideas out. You guys talk about them in private in your executive sessions, and figure out is it is it doable? That's all I'm saying. Uh, let me ask you, sir. Uh, how, when did you move here? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. Retired at that time. I'm retired. And so I've been you retired. probably came here and you looked around and you said, hey, this is a nice place to spend the rest of my life, maybe. And it's safe. It's clean. Beaches are nice. Taxes are pretty good. So why would you want something to change like that? With the response time, I think it was three minutes and 14 seconds or something like that. You know, I, I understand the salaries. Don't get me wrong. We all understand the salaries. That's why my proposal in the beginning, which I'm not allowed to talk about anymore, <laughs> is to fix the problem coming through the door. Stop beating on the guys here. It's never going to happen. These guys are still going to get the same salary till the day they leave. But you have to fix the problem coming through the door. As an analysis, you, you, you should understand that, that the problem is the salaries. The salaries have to be fixed now, so within the next five, six years, the salaries are where you want them to be. As I see it, you're mostly, you're losing sight of the forest for sake of the trees. You're fixing 100,000 here, 100,000 there. That's what I'm saying. You're, they're trying to fix I'm, problems I'm, here. I'm saying fix let's the try problem to save coming through millions. The door. Well, exactly, right. but let, at, at what cost? That's what I'm saying. Let, let, me, let me explain what's a little bit different about Brigantine. First of all, you did mention that, the bridge, okay? Bridge is, is a wonderful thing because it separates us from, from the rest of the communities <laughs> in the county. But it's, a, it's, a, it's also something that separates us from the rest of the communities in the county. The Brigantine has about 9,000 property lines, about eight, and probably if you looked at units, it's probably <coughs> somewhere over 8,000 units that are out there. They're very close together. I keep hearing our seasonal population is now larger than our year-round population. So we have, and Public Works is a great example of that, they just answered 144 calls for broken pipes 
probably a lot of those people weren't here. So we're servicing, the services are here year round. You know, when, when, the, uh, when those condominiums uh, caught on fire last winter, the, they weren't occupied or they might have been from, for rental, but what I'm getting at is you got a lot of property right now about 3.3 billion was down from 4 billion that we're protecting. That's everybody's investment. And I know shared services and we, we've looked at shared services. We do shared services with our own school district. That works. But the Atlantic State Fire Department is short staffed I think the way they are right now. They are a tremendously uh, professional group and we have a great working relationship and to be honest with you our staffing probably is dependent on them being able to respond on mutual aid. So those things are in place. They don't have a dive team. We do. So they don't we, have what? They, we, th we share services, we scoop, uh, the dive uh, oh, search and rescue. Dive team. Okay. Those kind of things are shared. Yeah. The other thing that happens at Brigantine that, that has been talked about is our firefighters are also EMTs. So they're responding to all those emergency calls all, all day long and the bulk of their work is really on the EMS side. I mean, it really, you know, if you looked at the numbers, I haven't seen the numbers total for this year. And the classic example for me, because I lived it, was seeing what we had to do during Superstorm Sandy. I know that was the storm of the century, but you had our fire department, our public works, and our police department working together to rescue over 100 people. I was here, and when you looked around, the people who were here, that's all you had. And that was probably for 24, 36 hours. There wasn't anybody coming to help. They couldn't. They were dealing with other things. The, the National Guard didn't show up. I mean, they were dealing with what they had to deal with, especially up north. We've had them here in the past. You had the staffing, you had the expertise. And for me, it's amazing how things change in a year. You go from, you know, I know it's a trite phrase, from hero to zero in a year. Uh, it, it's, it's incredible. Those people, and uh, Jane brought it up, we listened to those stories. It had to be at least 50% of the people talked about how the fire department responded and the things in the, fire, the police department, public works, and the things that they did that day. Now, I don't know if we get that with other, and I don't know if they would be able to respond, but you know, when you look at the whole community, I think it's what Councilman Simpson was saying, the quality of life issues, the reason people move here, the people, reason people stay here, they want clean streets, they want good schools, they want to be safe, and they want it to be affordable. So we're working on the affordable end. Mm -hmm. And I would still tell you that if you compare our taxes to other full service communities, you, you go offshore, they're not even full service communities, their taxes are higher. It, it, and I would, I would ask you to go get the county uh, rateables, take a look at that. <coughs> The benefit we have is we have a lot of seasonal residents who, uh, who make up that tax base. So our rateables are high compared to the population and, we have. And one of the reasons our taxes are relatively low is because of the number of children that attend school in this uh, city. Low. We don't, we don't have really a whole lot of no, kids. No, we don't. That, that has de decreased That's a over big the help. years. Yeah. Nice. Sir, if I could, just to clarify a couple of things before I get spun out of control. The manager has said, I have said publicly and privately, a volunteer fire department will not work in Brigantine. Like the mayor said, Brigantine is very unique, and everybody has said that. Even I know that in my limited experience here. You mentioned shared services. I'm not going to get into shared services, but things to keep in mind that we have had that discussion with the fire department is there's a level of service, of intrinsic service, that goes beyond putting water in a fire, as I so eloquently call it. So I just wanted to just make sure that was clear. The other thing is the pension system, just so people watching don't get the wrong idea. Firefighters and police officers pay into the pension system, as does the city. When they retire, the pension comes from the state. Now, granted, it's all tax dollars, and at some point in time, it comes to the same pot. But it's not the city residents paying that pension. And I've said from the beginning, one of the biggest challenges about public safety is you have to plan for what you may have to do, not what they do, necessarily. So yes, the crime rate is, quote, it's not off the charts. The calls for fires are not, you know, Atlantic City or, or Trenton. But again, the idea is to plan for what you have, may have to do as <coughs> opposed to what you actually do. So it's a balance. I understand what you're saying. I just wanted to make sure that, you know, something, the comments weren't necessarily spun the wrong way. It's and, and my comment on that is, and I, aside from being a management consultant, I was also a business owner for mm -hmm. about 20 years. You never staff 
for the the peak. Not suggesting that. Never, I, never. I agree. So you, you you can't staff for Hurricane Sandy. I agree. Because it's only going to happen. Right. I agree. Right. Every hundred years. And, but again, and based upon other people yeah. watching so, the statements, right. I just you want know, to make sure that it was it's, clear. It's a give and take, of yes, course. Sir. If yeah. if if you if you if you have a volunteer fire department or if you sub it out to Atlantic City, of course you're going to lose some some service. But that's but you, you also gain a lot of money and well, savings. Again, so everybody hears me so. say publicly, the problem is the bridge. The best part is the bridge. The problem is the bridge. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know. So I, know. I just so I'm saying on a record, that's the, the biggest Thank detriment you. is the biggest asset. But I'm, I'm just throwing out the idea. Well, because, thank you. Because people have been saying, mm -hmm. right. uh, the mayor said it, and I think Jennifer said it. We don't have, wh what are some of the alternatives? Well, this yep. is an alternative. And I, and I appreciate you coming and saying that, and I also appreciate you sitting there patiently all night. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch home. us at home. I'm too. going home. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> he goes, sir. <laughs> Uh, my name is John Marinelli. I live at 241 40th Street, Brigantine. Um, I recently returned to the island, just retired, and um, you know, this is, this is not fun watching this. But uh, one of the things I want to comment is that being in business 33 years and for a large corporation, many management positions, I mean, the first thing we look at when we get in a financial crisis is to cut. Okay? The only thing I, I, and I understand that, and I understand that you, you don't find big chunks. A lot, you you kind of got to spread it. Right? You got to you got to look at the little pieces too that add up. So that's something I think you know we encourage people to look at the little things too that we can participate in. And I don't want to pick on any one people, but is do we need a dispatch? Do we need other things? Right. But the other I want to I want to take it away from the, taking the other hands of finance and say, you know, can we look at it another way? When I look across the bridge and we look across the bridge and we really don't want their services, but when I see what he's up against over there, and I see he doesn't have the money. He's got a business sense about him. He's looking for ways of doing something. Is there something we can sell them that increases our coffers? Is there, if we're so good, we have such, such good people, is there some sort of service we can provide to charge them that we can help offset cuts? I don't know if we look at that. I don't know how far we go with that stuff. But you know, as task force, whatever we get yep. together, what can we do as a community to come forward and say, we're the best, come buy from us? Yeah, and I, and I, I think it's a great idea. I, um, I did see Mayor Guardian's uh, speech yesterday um, and uh, his unofficial state of the, the city. And, it, and those, there may have been some other members of council who were there, but um, he has some, some great ideas and a vision, I think, and a direction for Atlantic City that, that really is inspiring for all of us who, who live in the area. So, um, you know, I, I look forward to sitting down with him at some time. He's, he's, he certainly has his hands full with everything that's going on. But um, there are a lot of good things that, are, that I think he has planned in Atlantic City and, and uh, the direction that um, he has set. So uh, I think that would be a worthwhile conversation. Yeah, let's grow our business, yeah. right? Let's, and, you know, instead of cutting firemen, maybe we do something and we add, you know, because we're getting revenues. You know, we're, we're expanding that business. So that's a great idea. Thank, thank you. you. Frank? These guys are indoors, aren't they? <laughs> Frank Papa, 105 Roosevelt Boulevard North. As Andy stated earlier, being a businessman, I too was a businessman. I had 48 men working for me. I worked from Cape May to Trenton, New Jersey. Jobs all over the state. I ran the whole operation. I had foremen, just like we have captains, I had foremen to handle my business. I wasn't on the job every day. I had them to take care of it. And that's why we have captains and lieutenants. The thing that I want to bring up, we're losing seven firemen come February. Is that correct? Yes. I think right. we're, so we're, we're going to be six. Yeah, six. We're going to be seven men short. Is that correct? Yes. What's that do to our fire department? Makes it short-handed. Makes it short-handed. Right. Now, if we hire people to join that fire department, is it not true that it takes approximately approximately six months before they become firemen? They got to go to the academy. I don't think it takes quite that long for the fire academy. Five to go months, shorter, I believe. No, it's, it's a hundred. I think it's 150, 152 hours if they go to the normal class, quote, normal class. It's the current one is February 11th. I believe it's the beginning of June. Um, 
currently there's one in June that's supposed, supposed to be, according to the director I spoke to, an accelerated class, which is three and a half weeks, but unless there's a full-time academy class, which there's none, according to fire safety, that's anywhere planned in 2014, um, that it's usually that four-month window. So in the meantime, we're going to be four months short of firemen. They also, you're, you're, they, they come certified as EMTs, though, as well. Um, I agree. I, I understand that. No, what I'm getting at what is, I'm, depending what I'm, on how the class is structured, they can join the department as an EMT. They would join, well, yes. the way it's been, they would right. join the department as an EMT, yes, sir. What I'm getting at, we're going to be short firemen for the next four months. Now, we're all talking about the safety of us residents. And don't get me wrong. I use the firemen. They come save me in a storm. I've had a heart attack. They were there. All well and good, but we're going to be short four fire or seven firemen for the next four months because we can't hire and they become firemen right away. What's wrong with hiring part timers in the interim, which we're going to have to do to man the firehouse? All I hear about the most important thing is we have a chief and we have a fire. We have a, 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 a chief for the police, a chief, chief for the fire department. Should be more important to worry about the next four months where we're not going to have the amount of firemen required to fight a fire. Frank, when they're And hired, that's why we're hiring part-timers. My understanding is that when they are hired, they are completely certified as EMTs. So they, let me finish. Go ahead. They join the shift as an EMT. They would be able to go on, a, on EMT calls at that time when they're not. The training isn't, depending on how it's structured. I don't know that some of it's, Part-time training, some of it's full-time, as uh, Director Howard said. I'm not sure how it's going to be structured right now. We got an ad in the paper for part-time firemen. Is that correct? Well, not in the paper. Apparently, in the uh, New Jersey League of Municipalities. Whatever, uh, whatever it is. I've seen the ads in the uh, Brigantine Times and Beachcomber. We're going to have to hire somebody to take the place of them seven firemen for the next four months. You're not going to get a guy to come in as a fireman and take a job for four months. He's going to say, to hell with Brigitte, and I'll go somewhere else and get a job. We still have to fill them seven spots. Well, we, we should have done it earlier. Uh, oh, we all, we, just, we all can look, at, uh, look and say we should have hired them away and loaded up the, the fire department with extra men. But you've got to remember, we have, we have a budget. Us taxpayers have to foot the bill. So now the next four months, which we didn't do, and there's a lot of things we could have done years back that we wouldn't be in this predicament, but we didn't do it. That's water over the dam. Now we're at a point where we got to hire part-timers to fulfill the firehouse. That's and everybody's fighting against part-timers. That, that's your, your logic, Frank. I'm not sure that's the way well, it works. Well, you out. give me your logic. What are we going to do? What are we going to do being short seven men in the fire department? I haven't heard one of the fire chiefs come up and say what, or the, the, the union guys come up and say what they're going to do. We don't have a fire chief. We got lieutenants and we got captains, don't we? I think they would make it work. Well, let me ask Mr. Howard, what are we going to do? I'm not going to tell you. In respect to what, Mr. Fabius? In respect to filling them seven right. spots for the next four months until guys become certified. Well, that's the continuing challenge that the manager's working on. The, the problem comes in is, as you said, you have to have somebody in there. It's not a question of being short because the minimum shift strength has not changed in years. It's still remaining the same. The question is the overtime issues or how they're going to stay at that six, oh, six man minimum. Are you the overtime at time Well, I'm not saying they're paying all the overtime, but sometimes that becomes in a mix as well. You guys got to figure that out. It's easy to snap the finger and say no part-timers, but in the meantime, pay them all overtime and a half so the taxpayer picks up the cost. Well, that's not, that's, not, that's not what I was saying. I'm just saying that, that is obviously part of that that's equation. But you have to get a body in the firehouse, clearly. Now, whether it's a full-time or a or per diem person, that's going to be the challenge going forward. All right, enough said about the firemen. I want to ask Ed a question. Ed, on street opening permits, what's the process? And what is the fee? For a in other words, for utility, I, I want to open up the street to put a sewer connection in. What is that fee? For a utility opening, road opening permit, it's $150, sir. Okay. Who repairs the street? 
the applicant? Well, as you're well aware, because you ride around the town, I believe that we should take the fee for the street opening permit and raise it to $500. When the guy opens up the street, if he doesn't repair it, he doesn't get his 500 back, the city repairs it. He goes, if you ride up and down the streets, take Atlantic Brigantine Boulevard as one. If you ride on the right-hand lane on Atlantic Brigantine Boulevard, you're hitting bumps every house. Where, street open, where the street openings were, they're not patched back properly. And consequently, what happens? We're gonna end up paving the whole street because of street opening permits. You go down Third Street South. If you don't break an axle in the car going down Third Street South because of the potholes from the street opening permits. <coughs> now, I know up in the Camden County area, that's what they used to do. You paid, the, you paid 500 up front. If you didn't repair the street, the city repaired it. And if you repaired it, you had to put concrete in the ditch and you had to come back and pour a hot patch on top of it. And if that's done in town, that would solve half our problems with our streets. Thank you, Frank. I, I would like to, to, to bring that up so that when the fee ordinance comes in, that that gets changed. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, the gentleman behind. There we go. Andrew. <laughs> How you doing, Council? Good. My name is Christopher Emmel. I'm a Lang City resident. I'm a union president of Lang City Firefighters. Just to rebut the gentleman that left, uh, we can barely handle what we have. I'll be honest with you. Being fortunate enough, when you called us, we did come. But there's times that we have no rig nothing available, no trucks at all. So for him to say, come in, want Lang City to take over, we make 20,000 more. My top paid fireman makes 20,000 more than your top paid fireman. So we're all talking about budgets and everything else. It's going to be a lot more money, OK? Uh, like I said, we mutual aid. Um, there's talks about in the city about charging you guys for mutual aid now. There's been talks, you know, because you know, different things going on. Uh, but like I said, for us to come here, over here, it's going to be a lot more money. So, and like I said, we've been fortunate enough. When you did call us, we were able to get over here. But we're over the bridge. Before our first truck gets into the, over the bridge, we're 10, 15 minutes, if we're not on another call. We're about 5,500 average calls a year. So if we're not on a call, you're still about 10, 15 minutes. Judging that fire doubles in size every minute, <coughs> you do the math. It's not good, all right? So I just wanted to let you, know, let you know about that other guy, all right? I appreciate you coming over, thank you. <laughs> Sandy. <laughs> John. I said Sandy. Well, he doesn't say no, it's a, I'll make it real quick. I'm here. Yeah. John Johnson, 36, go Kill Beach Drive. One way to help handle manpower shortages is what the building trades do, and that is they ask some of the recent retired members if they would like to return to work on a limited basis and forego the benefit, or even if you paid the benefit. That is a way you could possibly fill your shortfall in a you know reasonable, quick way. Thank you. Thank you, John. I, I, yeah, I, I, it's a great idea. I think it has pension consequences, though. I think they can't come back uh, once they're out. We don't want you back, so we <laughs> Sandy? Sandy Williams, 105 10th Street North. I'm here tonight to announce a committee that I'm a part of. Uh, it's a nonpartisan group of citizens for Brigantine called the Concerned Citizens for Brigantine. Our um, objective is to abolish the permanent position of public safety director. We're gonna begin circulating our petition tomorrow. I know earlier I had said uh, today, but it's gonna start tomorrow morning. And um, everyone that supports the idea of abolishing the public safety director position and um, eventually restoring the chiefs in these departments is encouraged to uh, like our page on Facebook. We also have a phone number, so you can call us and we'll come out to you with the petition. Um, the phone number is 369-6390. Again, it's 369-6390. Uh, we hope to hear from everyone, and again, we'll be happy to come out with our petition, and um, we're looking for your support on Facebook. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. 
Mrs. Phillips. Ann H. Phillips, 308 27th Street. This is a statement from the Brigantine Taxpayers Association. I'm going to read it. <clears throat> and it concerns the possible appointment of a permanent director of public safety in place of departmental chiefs. Recently, the city had such a director at the same time it had chiefs, clearly an unnecessary and costly level of oversight. Now, it is timely for our elected and appointed officials to analyze and evaluate current operations to decide if there is a better and less costly way to do what they determine needs to be done. Such is their job. There are several credible reasons for doing so. They are a weak economy, the current very generous compensation for chiefs, the necessity to reduce the cost of municipal government and the excessive burden on taxpayers, advances in technology, and changes in methods of operation and in our population. The two priorities of the BTA, and they should be the priorities for all individuals here, are an acceptable level of safety and service for the taxpayers and an affordable cost to them of providing these things. If a satisfactory level of safety and service can be provided at less cost, it should be done. And so far, under the interim director, the city is receiving a satisfactory level. Whatever the choice, we would expect the affected departments to continue to operate in their usual professional manner. We believe the city manager is doing her job to determine and provide the necessary cost-effective leadership in the public safety departments, whether with chiefs or a director. The new salary ordinance provides for either situation. We support the purpose and the process and the thorough way it is being handled. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Phillips. Okay, any other uh, comments? Yes, John. I just wanted to make one comment about the school board. Less children doesn't necessarily mean less budget because the school gets state aid for each child that's there and you have um, solid expenses and as far as the facilities. So it's not necessarily uh, less children, less budget with the, with the schools. I've been coming to these meetings pretty consistently for seven months. A and it's not just the fire department and the police department and the beach department topics that there's major problems here. I, I think you have a, an administrative lack of communications. Earlier, earlier last year, you, you couldn't even pass a $4 million budget the first time it was defeated. Many other times, things were taken off the agenda, and I was here, because of not having sufficient information. So I, I think you have an inherent problem with communication as far as information that you're getting to make the, deci the decisions that you need to make. It's not just the topics that we need tonight. I think it's more far stretched than, th than that. M Mr. Simpson, um, you had mentioned earlier tonight that you, 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 know, you would have liked to have talked to, to some people, but you couldn't, you weren't allowed. I believe that the committee form of government has li the elected officials or liaisons to all the departments. Fire chief, uh, administrative, your zoning, planning boards, they are in the committee form of government when you have five committee members allowed to talk more than what you're saying that you're not able to talk. You just can't do it with um, city council form of government because the city manager's position is a strong position. F 
past two years, I've had twice a, a reason to call 911 at my property. The first time was the, the renter behind me made a six-foot bonfire in his backyard about 30 feet from my back door. I smelled the smoke inside the house. Called 911. The second time was during renovations, the house next door that was severely damaged. Uh, when, when I showed up 8 o'clock in the morning to continue my renovations, there was a very heavy smell uh, of gas. There was a gas leak inside that house. That time I called 911. Both times the fire department showed up immediately. They were wearing all this gear. I didn't care how much they made at that time. So when you make your decisions, you, you, you ought to think of those times also. When I had to call them, I didn't care how much taxes I was paying when I needed those men at my home. Councilman Simpson, I think you might have had a hell of an idea. You, you just mentioned earlier, a few minutes ago, you made a motion. P your public is crying to you, make a decision. Where is it at? Tell us what's going on. It's been 10, 12 months. You made a motion on some, on some decisions. Now we know which way or another, who voted, how they feel. I, I think that somebody tonight ought to make a motion to hire the public safety director. And then we'll know. Then we'll know who votes yes and who votes no. And then we can go on to the next meeting, like Mayor Gunther uh, suggested, on the bigger and better things. But at least we would know. If somebody made that motion, it would be up or down. So I'd ask the, somebody in, in the council to consider that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Jim Conte, one way North Roosevelt. Just a quick question for Mr. Simpson. Sure. Jennifer's handling the negotiations with the unions. Did you or did you not, which you brought up tonight about doing away with two jobs to save $180,000, we can hire firemen starting out $30,000 a year. Da, 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 da. Did you bring that up to her or aren't you allowed to talk to her? No, right. I, did you, I mean, before tonight, has she found out about that? No, she's in the negotiation. Oh, there's the problem with communication. Right. Maybe if you'd have thrown this out to her and, and talked to her, because Mr. Poulos said he can, he can contact her. Maybe if you would have contacted her, she could have brought that up uh, she should negotiate because throwing it out here and you throwing out all these numbers, the union still got to vote for that. I the members got to vote for that. Well, maybe that, if you would have thrown that why out, you we would have never got with this part-time crap. Maybe well, if she would have thrown it out to the union, maybe the union would have accepted some of that. And she could have came back and presented that to the board right. instead right. of just dropping it out tonight. I mean, right. It sounds good, but you still got to get it. To, you still got to present it to the union, and she's the one who's supposed to be presenting it. They have to agree to it. Right. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Just, just out of curiosity, how many meetings have you had with the firemen? Um, with the fire, we've just had the one meeting. Our second one's on the 21st, I believe, and, and which is next week. Okay. Thank you. Lower their starting salaries yes. and <laughs> extend their um, steps, okay. the 22 steps. That's my suggestion. Sorry. Um, Frank Cioci, 33 Hill Road. Um, I want to thank Mr. S uh, Councilman Simpson for tabling the fee, um, fee cost, especially for Sandy. Um, I speak for a lot of people on my street that are right now just starting to get their funds. So it's kind of very important as far as the permits that that be, that be tabled and an extension for a good year because I just went through the whole thing with REM. Uh, on a good note and something positive, I am done. My home will be started on. The time frame for everything that's going on is extremely long. I will be waiting five, five weeks for the engineer 
before I can have the construction company come out and give a firm estimate. On that estimate that I've got from a few of the contractors, the to be determined cost was put on every one of them because of the permits. They don't know what they're going to be because they don't know that what had just happened was January, you extended it, but we still don't know for how long. So a decision on that would be very vital to, there's many other people in the same situation that haven't even started. There's people that, neighbors on my street that are, these are their vacation homes. And they don't know that number to be determined. So I want to thank you for suggesting that. I will, count, uh, I will contact some council members if they would like any information on how long this process took me. It was four meetings with REM at three and a half to four hours a meeting. And now it's the, right now, I will have to find suitable housing for four months, at least four months to get the program, to get my house built. And there's, I call it the um, Hill Road, if any of you go down that street, uh, there's about six residents and the rest are uh, summertime rentals. Four of the homes right in next to me, across the street from me, all have to be lifted. These people come down here in the summer. They can't come to these meetings. They can't do as much as they, as they want to in, the, in a proper time. So I just wanted to say thank you for suggesting that and tabling that. And hopefully uh, someone will contact me. I will go through the whole procedure of how long it takes and what you need to do. And um, I've been down here 43 years. I just moved down here permanently, 2010. I won't comment on anything that was said tonight regarding the budget. I come from Burlington County. I've been in real estate 25 years. I've heard some things here tonight that I do have comments on as far as running a, uh, run, running a borough. I was on the Economical Development Committee for um, a river to New Jersey and where I raised my, my children. They've been coming down here for 43 years as a summer home. And uh, we, we just, we love it. I have a lot of respect for it. I'm just learning now, since 2010, how the town is being run. And um, I hope that's something positive. I really do, because I think after I was, I was watching this on TV after I was here earlier, and I missed the part that I could have talked before. I didn't see the fee. The fee. I didn't realize that that was part of the REM program or the Sandy. So I had to come back and and say something from everything I heard today, and that's what I'm doing. So thank you, and Great. I hope. Um, I hope there's very much consideration on these poor people that suffered in Sandy. I'm very pleased that I got through it, but there's a lot of other people that are in still great need of help. And not having to pay for permits is a big part of it. Thank Frank, you. Congratulations Sir. on getting through uh, REM. Yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> Frank, the, the one. One question I have for you is, are, and, and not to spend a lot of time on, on you know, that particular aspect of it, but um, you've actually, you actually did pretty well if you got through in four meetings, because I've heard others have been longer, but the, the other part, are you using your own contractor or are they assigning a contractor? Well, I, I, I could go through that program with anyone's interest, right. but I will answer that. There, uh, there's a few options. 
One is going strictly with REM, and they are in full control, and they charge more. And the other is the reimbursement program. And I don't like not being in control of my life and my, my assets. Right. So I ch chose the reimbursement program. So now it's up to me to find the right people to do the right job and um, as far as the fees, in every, every estimate that I have, it's a to be determined. Right. But that's the program that I, that, I, that, I, that I have chosen was to go with being able to make and decide on my own people to work on my house that I am going to be re retired in or Whatever. Good. Well, congratulations. Okay. Frank, yes. I think the recommendation came from the city manager to extend those fees to the end of June. Yeah, it was, um, there were two different things that happened. The fee ordinance, I think Councilman Simpson didn't want to raise any fees, and council as a whole decided to waive the permit fees like we were talking about in my office until June 30th okay. of this year. Um, that's very good, but I think that has to be considered again. And again, I will explain why, and I won't do it. There's been enough time spent here today. But from, I've got five weeks to just get my engineer report. Mm -hmm. Then after that, I have to get the contractor, and that will be March. That might take all of March. Um, and that's if the um, connections are approved. That's if the permits are approved. And that's also waiting for the gas and all, everything to be reconnected to get a CO. And from some of the experiences of people on the island, waiting for the gas company to come out could be another four weeks. So I do not believe that June is sufficient time I think it should be a year, and also my neighbors and people who cannot act as quickly as I am because they don't live here are going to feel the same way. Frank, this may be easier to solve than, than maybe we're looking at too with the RREM. I know uh, the engineer and the building department have a list of those properties that have been impacted and, and are either in the process or approved for the process. Um, that may be real easy to tie that list that comes directly from the state, you know, the, the fee issues. And then I, the other thing would be uh, perhaps maybe people can show their insurance damage that's directly related to Sandy. So we could maybe structure an ordinance that way so we don't have to keep doing it every so many months. Well, that's, that's what I'm suggesting right. to you because I'm on the REM program. There are other people in my area they're not on that program that are, are doing the um, ICC right. and doing different, different programs. And there's other applications, there's other things that are there that you could apply for. And all of that takes time. Yep. So I think that I will be back here in June and other people in the same situation will be back here in June to ask for another extension. So that's why I'm suggesting June is not enough time. No, and I think I agree with you. Thank you. Yeah, you know, okay. I, I think we can, we'll work on that. That's not a problem. Before and, June. Yeah. And uh, in regard to my neighbors, I think this is the same way that they're gonna feel. I have a meeting with a few of them Saturday. And it's something that ha has to be we should not have to have another thing that we have to on our, on our contracts that says to be determined. We want to eliminate that 2000 whatever it costs to do that and be able to go to our sources and say this is exactly what it's going to cost. I agree. Thank you, Thank you for Thank bringing you. that up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, Joe. Council Joe Kalankowitz, 14 McDermott, 
formerly 139 10th Street. Uh, uh, what I came here to ask about uh, is the drainage at 14th Street and the Bay here and to find out what the status is on uh, any kind of repairs because it's, we've had lots of <laughs> just years, year after year, 10, 15 years, really like to get some something going on that and find out what the, what the status is. The, the bulkhead replacement at, at 14th Street was approved in the last bond ordinance. Uh, so I am preparing RFPs for professional services to, to take care of that. The drainage, uh, I believe, was approved in a prior ordinance. It was started by the previous engineering firm and was not finished. Uh, so, so that one I have to get with the CFO, figure out where the, where the funds stand, okay. and try to move that forward. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. Any other public comment? All right, I'm going to close the public portion before anyone changes their mind. Uh, and uh, we, I guess, need an executive session. We have enough time. Yeah. What time is it? It's 11. Yeah. No. No. And no. Can I make a suggestion? Um, before we lose our audience, can we? Sure. I think we're losing. We're losing our audience quickly. Throw in a, a, a quick council comment so we can avoid that at the end? Yeah. All right. All right, keep it down out there. <laughs> the, um, How you doing, right? He's having private conversations. Great. Wait, are we in a meeting? <laughs> All right. While the crowd disperses, for the record, uh, I want to recognize from the premiere of Sandy Stories last week, Beth Bliss and Taylor Van Zandt. <laughs> Couple locals who did tremendous work, okay. gifted artists, I, I and appreciate, thank you. one of the breakout stars from that film, sitting to my right, Lynn Sweeney. Okay, need a motion to retire to executive session? Uh, so moved. Did you already make your comment, Rick? Yes. Yeah, well, okay. there were some private discussions Thank going you. on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, need a motion to end the make topics that will be discussed? Uh, okay, Lynn, if you could read the uh, resolution, please. Whereas you know Mrs. Phillips, Phillips is going home. Act permits the exclusion of the public from meeting in certain circumstances. And whereas this public body is of the opinion that such circumstances <laughs> presently exist. We got it. Whereas the governing body wishes to discuss a matter of leasing of municipal property and potential contracts. These will be kept and once the matter involving confidentiality of the above no longer requires that confidentiality that the minutes should be made public. Now therefore be it resolved that the public be excluded from this meeting. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Do you expect us to take action upon our return, Mr. Sarney? Do we need to take action? No. No. Okay. Well, we have to take action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, the uh, license.